Hello and welcome back to my garage. In today's video we are going to replace the timing belt on my brother's car, the Renault Megane from 2012, it's a 1.5 diesel in this case. I've got a kit from Continental here with a SKF water pump and the only problem with this car is there are two kinds of belts. One belt is longer than the other, just a couple of teeth. I don't know, remember uh, the exact uh, teeth count, but what I did, I have both. I've got, uh, I think, uh, the longer one and the shorter one in the box below. Maybe it is possible to determine which length you need by the chassis number or maybe even the engine number but i didn't bother doing that i just got both belts i think enough said and let's get going most of the time i struggle with starting a job like this especially when i never done it before or at least never done a timer belt on a car like this do I start underneath? Do I start from the top? Uh, what do ne you need to remove? What uh, can stay? How can I make stuff easier? Or how can I do it faster? It's always a bit of a trial and error in this case. So most of the time what I do is just get a good look underneath the car and well underneath the hood in this case of what is what is the price the price is right underneath here the cover is even loose that's not how it's supposed to be but oh well um, this is the price and this is an ac line and i'm glad that that's not in the way we have here the return and the feed line from the fuel and I think we need to unclip it, or at least put it aside. I think we need to unclip this one because it's a hard line or a hard plastic line and they don't want to bend very well. So we are going to remove that. Uh, this one with a squeaky ball for uh, pumping the fuel. I think we can just push that aside and then again i think we have to remove these four bolts here and three here so we can remove the top mount but before we can do that we need to put a brace in, into its place so ah, maybe we don't have to remove this one well, let's see if I can work around it. Well, at least unclip this one. This is for the uh, O2 sensor. And now we are officially started. It's always a bit of a hassle with new cars where you can uh, put this brace. Sometimes fenders are not even uh, metal anymore, but plastic. And this one has a, I don't know if you can see it. This one has a lot of uh, room between it. So if we put it on here, we're definitely going to misform this whole panel. So I think I'm going to put it just underneath here. Right here is a lifting point. So it will be nice if we can use that to, well, lift of course. So if when we remove the bolts, it doesn't, at least doesn't drop. Drop is scary, believe me. 
First of all we are going to remove these four bolts and these are not 17 like I thought but 16. There are also three below here, so we need to take those off. And these are 16 also. And now with a bit of luck we can just lift up this whole thing. There it is, the whole uh, engine mount. No! Okay, it looks like you can just flip this over. If you have the tabs loose, of course, and these are loose. You cannot remove it, but at least you have a, a peek into our price. The bell doesn't look that bad from the looks of it. Even the, the timing marks are uh, still visible. I don't think we can do anything more from the top at this moment. So we're going to lift up the car and let's have a little bit of a look underneath it. If you are careful, you can just pry them out, but uh, they are prone to break, so maybe it's not a bad idea to get a couple of new ones, just in case. This is how it looks like with the inner liner removed and as you can see there is a bracket right here that holds in place with a bolt right here and it's sandwiched between the subframe at least that is what I could see. The only problem is is that you have to reach the subframe from all the way down here and it's a uh, 18 but you don't want to drop the subframe all the way because I think then we have some other issues if we do that and hopefully we can just slide this thing out of the way if not well there's a problem for later this is a 13 by the way I think that's just enough to Oh. I really did expect that it uh, to be able to turn it around, but we can't. Hmm. Well, we try to work around it. If not, then I probably have to undo it all the way, but for now, this is okay. Okay, I wanted to remove this plastic cover. What I did is raise the engine as much as I could with the support bar. There is a torque screw right here, and it's a T25. I now I can just get to it 
at least. That is what I thought. Here it is. It was located right here. Also you need to remove this tab and there is also a tab on the other side. It's almost not visible but then you can take it off. Next up we want to remove this uh, piece of the mount. It's held in place with one, two, three, four screws and I think it's uh, 10 millimeters. Now you know why some uh, sockets have this, well, curly knurling nur on it. So you can have some grip when uh, you want to try to remove it like so. This is what you have to work with. So I put back the, the other bolt also. Uh, and there are one, two, three, four, five bolts to remove. And uh, then you can take the whole piece out. Next up, uh, we're going to remove the uh, uh, accessory belt or how do you want to call it? I'm sorry if you're a bit wobbly, but uh, this is the best I can do. Uh, here is the tensioner. It's really wobbly right now. Here is the tensioner. And as you hopefully can see, there is a... It looks like a uh, hexagon or a nut. So we can put a, a wrench on it and pull it so we can remove the... Uh, uh, accessory belt. I think it's a 17. So let's see if I'm right. Uh, it's a 16. So now it's on there. We can just pull it like so. And at the same time, try to remove the belt. So that's going to be fun. Well, I cannot get it off because I lifted the engine too high, so it's now hitting against the side, so there is no room to remove the belt. But at least I get it off the lower pulley, so we can now just lower the engine again. Maybe it was easier to intention the tensioner. Yeah, say that a couple of times. And uh, like so, and then remove the belt. Or at least get it out of the way. So I think now it's time to remove the pulley. It feels like an 18, so let's try an 18. That comes off uh, pretty easy. Okay, we have uh, to align the sprockets. Hopefully you can see it all. Let me just make a little bit of room. 
Okay, well, as you can see, there is a yellow dot right here. It's not a dot I made, but... And that has to be aligned here with the top. And... The other pulley for the high pressure pump has two dots right here and here and the line and the line is the most important one and that line is over here can you see that yeah this has to line up with right here so what we're going to do is uh, turn the engine uh, clockwise until uh, the marks align As you can see it doesn't align very well but the most important thing is is that this one is aligned and of course the bottom one I will show you that later this one is uh, just about a tooth off but one of the reasons is you can rotate this cam uh, of this cam pulley uh, and this isn't it has to be uh, roughly in line, but it has doesn't have to be exactly One of the things I don't like about those systems So I'm always trying I know that the engine runs like this So I always try to get it on there like this and not try to uh, figure it out all again And if we did a good job then of course, all the hard lines are in the way. Uh, let me see if I can give you a little bit of a better shot, but of course not. You can just put uh, this guiding pin or this blocking pin right into if not, then uh, we have to wiggle around uh, the engine a little bit. This should be dead on. It only doesn't feel that way. Yeah, that's better. Now it is all the way in, so it's completely locked. Uh, now we have to lock the engine. Another thing I don't like right now is this dot right here. This one. is just... Next up, we are going to remove the belly pan. Um, I bought a kit for well installing this. So we need to put a stop, a rotating stop uh, near the tranny. So yeah, first of all, we need to remove this uh, whole plastic stuff. <laughs>
Okay guys, sorry I cannot show you any better. Here is the starter motor. And you see the sens a sensor right here. I think the sensor is for the oil uh, gauge, oil level. And just right around there, in the side of the block, you have a external torque thing. This one fits. It's one of these things. And it's a 14. Here we have it. So now we have one of these pins. And we can uh, just screw it in there. But only if... Only after... Uh, we set the crank to that center. Okay, what I do in this kinds of situations is just mark the crap out of it where it's located right now and try to put it back the way we found it. Um, right now we need to remove the, the pulley or the tensioner from the timing belt. So we can remove this all and uh, hopefully don't fuck it up. Just loosen it up a little bit and then we can use a uh, Allen uh, wrench. Just a size 6 Allen, just to intention this thing. Uh, we could have done it with uh, probably just our hands. So now we can remove the bolt. At least it's out of our way. So now we can just remove the, the belt. Well, I worry about this later. First of all, I need to get this uh, plastic piece off to get to the water pump. Uh, there are a couple of bolts that held it in place. I don't think I can show you what to remove, but when I remove it, I will show you the cover so you know where to look for. These are 10, by the way. Well, the ones on the bottom you can get to pretty easy. So hopefully we can now... This is the piece. It's installed like so. The two at the bottom. The two at the bottom you can get to pretty easy and the other one is just below the high pressure pump pulley. Well, I raised the engine as much as I can, and as you can see, here are the, of here is the water pump, and these are the bolts we need to remove. I do really believe this is the original water pump. It is a good thing we are going to replace it because it has some uh, play on it. And there are one, two, three, four. There are five bolts in there, and these are eight. If you are complaining that you don't see anything, you, now you know how I feel most of the time. I don't undo all the bolts all the way, so we can drain it uh, at a rate that isn't flushing all over the place. I'm not. I'm not undoing the bolts all the way, just uh, a little bit, so uh, we can give it a little tap and just drain the coolant.
Well, we do now know that this, this is the official water pump that came from the factory because we need to snap the, it in half because normally the, I believe the bottom section where the oil pump is, is attached to it. So, yeah, they should have replaced it, but oh well. These use these metal gaskets and they're covered in a little bit of, well, rubberized material. You don't have to use any uh, silicon or RTV or something on it. I just doing a little bit of silicon on these threads. Maybe you have seen when I uh, remove them, there is at least one through hole. And that is this one. Not the top one, but the one uh, below it. So make sure that you do at least on that bolt a, a little bit of uh, silicon or of course some uh, special sealant for that. I did manage to get the plastic piece back into its place and install the free screws. Sorry I didn't uh, film that, there was just not enough room to get it done. Um, now it's time to get the belt on and now I can at least show you the easiest way I found to do that. First of all install the uh, uh, tension pulley. And this pulley must be installed something like this. This thing over here has to grab a point here into the block. You see that little uh, notch right there? There is where it uh, must come in. Let me zoom in a little bit. The little nut right there, there you have to put that, uh, well, that little hook right there. Just hand tight yeah, so it can still flop around. And now it's time for the belt. Just put on some new gloves or just make sure your hands are clean when you are handling the belt. So the first thing I do is just hook it on the bottom on the bottom pulley. So I did uh, put it on there, and then of course uh, through the water pump. Or a uh, next step, where you know it's secure, then. just on the edge of the uh, camshaft pulley and then just stretch it all the way to the high pressure pump 
and then it should just be easy just to stretch it over the water pump but I see I have to change a tooth because it's just a little bit too short Just be sure that the uh, adjuster is uh, at the shortest or at its longest. It's just how you want to call it, but as loose as it gets. So, nice and tight. And then be sure that the marks align that we made on the water pump or water pump, the high pressure pump. Like so. And then just stretch or stretch. Just let it glide on the water pump and as you can see it isn't that difficult to get uh, on there so uh, the marks look here okay and this one of course cannot move so let's see at the bottom if it still is in the place that I want it to be okay now we have this little lip or gauge right here and we need to move the needle into its place and of course we are going to use a Allen wrench for that. Sorry it's if it is all uh, wiggling all over the place, but uh, I try to keep it as still as possible. So just put your Allen key in there. It's a size 6 I believe. And just move it into its, its place, just between the two lines. Can you see that? Yeah, I think so. It is just between those lines. Now just tighten up the bolt, not too tight, just that it doesn't spin anymore uh, but because we want to do a couple of revolutions of the engine and check if everything is back in its place and it is a 13 but of course before we can turn the engine we need to remove the pin in the block and also this one of course As we can check, this one is over here, this one is on the mark here, and I will have a quick look at the bottom. And the bottom is also in its place. The only thing that is now off, and as expected, the tension of the pulley is off, as you can see, but that is what I expected. So. No worries there, just tighten it up. And just to be sure, we are doing a couple of more revolutions. Well, now it's time to remove uh, the old bolt again. Ah! 
First of all we need to install this uh, piece. It's held in place with those clips. One side is already uh, broken off. Oh well, it's not my uh, fault, at least not this time. So now that's back into its place, we can now uh, install the pulley. Just be sure that you align the slit with the key right here. Be sure you have the stopper installed into the side of the engine. So now we can torque the bolt and the bolt has to be torqued to 120 and then with 95 degrees more. It is a torque to yield kind of bolt. I already put the accessory belt just behind here. So we can now uh, Put this back. Also we mustn't forget the bolt that's here in this tube. And that was a 18, I believe it was. And it is. Well, we need to install that uh, bolt where our tool went in and like earlier I cannot show you exactly where it's located but I'm sure you will be able to find it. Also uh, you don't have to do this uh, from beneath it. Uh, I found out that you can uh, remove and install the tool when you are uh, well, from the top side. So you're not, so you don't have to remove the belly pan. I just uh, snapped the belt into its place, just untension the tensioner and put it in there. It is easier to do it uh, from the below, only thing you have to do is drop the engine all the way down. Then you can get to the tensioner better with the spanner. So that's my advice, sorry I don't have it on film, I'm a bit in a hurry right now, I really have to finish this. And it's taking so much time right now. But next up is this uh, alloy piece. I just raised the engine as high as possible. So we can put this back into its place. Next up we need to install this cover, don't forget to screw in uh, the bolt that's going right here.
Next up is the uh, motor mount. Let's bring it down a little bit. thing now is uh, put back this uh, inner piece and I won't bore you with how to do that so just a couple of those thick little well plugs and a couple of screws right here And it should be done. Oh yeah, of course, so we need to put back the tire. That's it. How to change your timing belt on your 1.5 DCI, I believe. And in this case, this is a no Megane. I can tell you I didn't have a lot of fun with this, it was figuring out most of the time just how to get the stuff loose. That is the most annoying thing every time you get a car you didn't done before. So hopefully I helped you with that and you know at least where to look for and you don't stare until you're almost dead. Uh, what to do next because I really had that with this car for some reason but oh well we're done and I really really would advise to get you a set of these I know I didn't use a black one but the black one is for some other car and model but oh well they come in a kit and a kit like this is maybe Fifteen dollars. So yeah, just just invest in a set like this. Also, you need a um, one of those. How do you call it? E sockets. These are these inner torques, and I used a fourteen, but it wasn't the correct size. I don't know exact. Maybe it was a four, 13 but don't really believe me but i used the 14 and it worked but yeah it wasn't that great well we have here the water pump and as i've shown well maybe you can see now it is already leaking and also Yeah, there is a, a lot of wobble in there. Also note that this is the original uh, water pump because I needed to break off these points. I have nothing else to tell you about this. Just that it is a sucky job. It is doable, now I think about it, but for me it was bleh. I did not like doing this one. I just didn't like doing it. It just took me forever. But of course, keep in mind I need to 
uh, move the camera camera around and um, yeah that stuff really takes a lot of time so maybe it's just my feeling that it's it's uh, had everything against me so don't be discouraged by that that's just my my own bitterness let it call it like that and that's it for today's video i hope you enjoyed it or at least learned something from it and if you did please give it a like if you want to follow me around you know what to do and i will see you next time bye Thank you.